Who can possibly be more excited, passionate, and driven about the mission of your business than you? You are, after all, the founder, director, the leader of the team. But what if you could raise the bar on quality? Today on episode 10, we're talking about developing clarity on quality and unpacking how to cultivate the expectation of high quality from your team and invite them to contribute. No more just getting by. We want to empower and drive our team to their highest possible good. Ready? Let's go. This season, we're unpacking the tools you need to effectively connect and collaborate with your team. Ready to build your personal toolbox? All that and more right now on the new generation leader on IBGR Profit Radio to start, grow, and exit your business. You are listening to IBGR International Business Growth Radio. We are live on IBGR across North America and around the world. Good afternoon, Mexico City. This is Thursday, December 10th at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 4 p.m. Pacific. And I hope you are ready for this year to come to an end. I know I am. I'm not just ready to get this year over with. I am truly excited about what is to come next year and what we are building towards. And I hope the tools that we talk about today will help you get ready for next year like you've never been able to prepare for a year in growing your business in coming together collaboratively as part of this community. Now, during today's show, I want to invite you to hop on over to ibgr.network. There are a number of ways for you to connect with the show while we're on the air and beyond. And I hope you will take the opportunity to jump into the community, to join the conversation. But most importantly, as far as today's show goes, download the show notes. The show notes will have links, tips, tools that we talk about here today on the show. And this is a great way for you to build your toolbox. I am Aaron Lee, your host here on The New Generation Leader, and welcome to today's episode, Developing Clarity on Quality. Quality is such an important part of what we do. What is your culture of quality? What kind of culture have you created in your business, and how are you conveying that out to the next level of your business? That's what we're talking about today, is how can we bring about that level of quality, that level of quality that we've come to expect from some of our favorite brands. How can you build that into your business? I am naturally going to reference one of my favorite global brands numerous times throughout the show today, but I'm going to start now. I just got an email earlier this week from Lee Cockrell, uh, the former executive who oversaw Walt Disney World. And he said, you know what, one of the keys to how we impact our visitors is to be preemptive, to be proactive, to get ahead, to have some level of expectation. And he said, having expectation of what your guest may need, of what your client might need, of what your customer may be expecting, to be proactive is not something that's exclusive to the Disney's of the world. It's not something that's exclusive only to the Ritz Carlton's or the Southwest Airlines or some of these pivotal brands that we look at for quality. It is truly something you can build in to set your business apart. And I think when we start to talk about quality, that's one of the keys that's so important. A lot of times we think, well, how does that impact the bottom line? How does that impact our budget? How does that impact our sales and what we have going on in every day of our business, how is that impacting us? Well, here's what we need to look at. In this rapidly changing world with everything that's going on around us, how do we bring about a level of quality that sets us apart? That is truly what can change your business, what can change your world, change how people interact with you. And it's that quality that we bring about that can truly change the game. So as we talk about building a culture of quality, we want to make sure that we're elevating that. It's really easy for us to 
as the key leader, as the owner, as the executive within the business, it's easy for us to carry quality. But how do we bring that level of expectation, raise that level of expectation in our employees, in our team members, to make sure that everyone in every level of our organization is bringing about quality in their work. Well, one of my consultant friends, Kevin DeShazo, sends out an email every day with a thought. And this was his email last week. And it's from his Keep Chopping Wood series. Kevin wrote a great book called Keep Chopping Wood. And the idea being that you don't chop wood that you want to burn in the fireplace today. If you want to have a fire in the fireplace next year, you have to start today, one chop at a time, and keep chopping wood. So here's what Kevin said in his email last week. Working with a team recently, and the theme that kept coming up was taking ownership. The CEO wanted each team and department leader to act like a CEO. If you want to make something better, do it, the CEO said. If you want to implement some new system, do it. The CEO said, I know I've been a roadblock in the past, and I fully own that. But I'm telling you today and going forward, each of you can hold me accountable to this, that I want you to take ownership of your team. It's the only way we get to the next level. And Kevin writes, the CEO's point was that the opportunities are there. Take them. Nobody's stopping you from getting better. Nobody's stopping you from getting healthy. Nobody's stopping you from growing. And if cost is an issue, remember uh, our platform, the New Generation Leader platform is free for individuals. So check that out at newgenerationleader.com slash IVGR. But usually what's stopping us is our own insecurity, our own fear, our own excuses. And when we get clear on that, Kevin writes, we can see the truth and take action. And isn't that just so, so true? We have such a great opportunity in front of us that as the leader, we have the opportunity to cultivate the culture that we have in our business. We have an opportunity to build a culture of expectation, of quality, of raising the bar. But what this CEO truly got right was that not only... Do leaders define the culture, but sub leaders define the subculture. And so, as a leader, you aren't just creating a culture that everybody else is supposed to get on board with. You are creating a culture that the rest of the team, the rest of the organization can get in line with, that they can implement themselves and carry out themselves in their part of the organization. And what you want to do as the leader, if you have a next level of leaders, sub leaders, if you will, under you in the organizational chart, is how do you equip them? How do you motivate them? How do you empower them to get to the next level as a leader? If you can do that, if you can unlock their potential, then we start to multiply the effect. We start to multiply the impact of our organization, of what happens, of what this looks like, of how we are making a difference through our business in our customers and raising that bar expectation of quality. Now, we aren't talking about acknowledgement and appreciating today, but when you talk about quality, you have to look at quality in every layer of your business. And I want to come back to Disney. This is one of my all-time favorite stories. When we were at Disney World a few years ago, we had a tough situation. It wasn't the end of the world. It wasn't awful. But it was a, a significant delay in one of the attractions based on how the team members were operating, uh, directing traffic, if you will, in one of the queues. And we sat and we waited and we waited and we waited. Now, at the end of a day at Disney World, that's quite all right to take a few minutes to sit down inside. We were in the air conditioning and to take a breather. 
But with two little kids at the end of the day, we were getting to a place of exhaustion. Well, I caught up with Brittany after the fact. We had a great productive conversation. I said, Brittany, I just want to let you know what happened in this situation so that it can get better for next time. I wasn't trying to get anything out of this, but Brittany on her own said, you know what? I am so sorry that happened, but I'm really glad you came to help us increase our our quality. We have that expectation. We want that for our guests. And as a cast member, Brittany said, I want to help rectify this. I want to make this better. And she did. So I tweeted that night, hey, Disney, Brittany R. from Sacramento took care of two little princesses tonight and made a hard situation so much better. And two weeks later, there was a reply to my tweet with this picture that you can see in the show notes of Brittany with a copy of my tweet printed out that the Disney leadership team had printed out, handed to her as an award. They said, we caught up with Brittany. She was so excited to receive this hashtag cast compliment tweet. Thank you. That was impactful for me because it showed me what level of expectation Disney had on quality. But it also reinforced for the team member, the cast member, what this level of quality and expectation meant. So as you look at the quality in your business, as we go throughout today's show, we're going to talk more about what it means for us to build a culture of quality, to develop clarity on quality. We'll be right back after this short break on IBGR. Do you know most teams function at less than 60% of their true potential? How much does this cost your business every year? For every team within your business, it's at least $200,000 in lost revenue. How do you solve this challenge? With Invincible Teams, you can. Measuring the five key building blocks of high-performing teams, we immediately know where to start to take your team to its true potential. Start your free assessment today at newgenerationleader.com slash IBGR. After working with some of the largest organizations in the world and thousands of small businesses in 116 different countries, we realize that all organizations share one thing in common. They all want to unlock the potential of people. They want everyone to be productive and empowered. They want their teams to perform at the highest levels while creating an amazing culture. They want to impact the lives of their customers. At Giant, We want what you want. We've discovered the science behind unlocking people, and that's why world-class brands trust us. We unlock organizations by implementing the Invincible Operating System. The Invincible Operating System begins with an assessment, so we can understand the current reality of your teams and where the growth opportunities are. Then we use our toolkit to go beyond teaching to true transformation. Our tools are memorable, practical, and profound. Lastly, we follow a process that allows us to effectively touch everyone in the organization with the right experience at the right time, so everyone from key leaders to team members can be fully unlocked. Are you ready to take your organization to the next level? Are you ready to become invincible? Most teams function at less than 60% of their potential, which costs you in lost revenue. The Invincible Teams Assessment tracks the five factors of Invincible Teams and takes your team to its true potential. Start your free assessment today at newgenerationleader.com slash IBGR.
Welcome back to IBGR International Business Growth Radio. If this is your first time listening to IBGR, I want to welcome you. If you're a returning listener, welcome back. Uh, we are so glad to have you as part of the community. And I invite you to join the conversation during the show or throughout the week. Go to at IBGR Network on your favorite social media channels. You'll find us on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and use the hashtag New Generation Leader to join the conversation about our show today. Um, we are taking a look at developing clarity on quality, wanting to raise the bar of expectation on quality in our business. This is episode 10 of this season on the New Generation Leader, where we are building a toolkit so you have what you need to lead your business. Now, we're going to talk about some of the tools of building clarity, developing clarity on quality, but I want to take a dive for a minute and look at this chapter from the New Generation Leader. It's coming out soon. You can pre-order at newgenerationleader.com. Get your copy as soon as it's available. But chapter four is crisis around the corner. And one of the key building blocks of new generation leaders is that we are aware of crisis. We are aware of uh, the challenges that we have. We are aware enough about the realities in front of us that we can be ready when crisis comes. So here's chapter four, crisis around the corner. I love catching up with my friend, Sandra Finley. She is the consummate professional, a gracious friend, and such an encourager. As she raises up leaders across every corner of our country, she maintains an incredibly steady presence. She leads with every trait of a new generation leader, advocating for upcoming leaders, investing in her community, and supporting leadership advocacy in communities across the country. Steadiness is vital in a crisis. Sandra called me a few weeks ago, and she's so honest and cuts right to the chase. I was a little scattered that day, my mind moving in a hundred different directions, quite familiar territory for my future-oriented mind, and I could not put together a coherent string of thoughts. Very calmly, she called me on it. You seem stretched. Tell me, what's going on? See her steady presence? I had the opportunity to partner with Sandra at a conference in Chicago. As CEO of the League of Black Women, she has become a strong proponent of VUCA. And as she has with businesses and teams across our country, she laid out VUCA on day one of our session. After I left Chicago, I started hearing VUCA everywhere. I heard it in a workshop a few months later. I heard it quoted on a podcast. A friend mentioned it in a conversation. I heard it referenced on a webinar. VUCA was everywhere, and I had been entirely unaware. Forbes summarized VUCA like this. VUCA is a concept that originated with students at the U.S. Army War College to describe the volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity of the world after the Cold War. And now, the concept is gaining new relevance to characterize the current environment and the leadership required to navigate it successfully. Since the Cold War, our world has appeared chaotic, confusing, and messy. Volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous. This is VUCA. How do we focus our scattered minds, prepare for disruption, and move decisively forward? VUCA provides a framework for us to effectively prepare for the inevitable response and make progress in chaos. As I'm writing this chapter, COVID-19 has shut down the vast majority of the world. I flew through the Atlanta airport in January 2020, and a fellow passenger had a mask on during my return flight to Richmond. In January, this was a distant concern, only relevant on the other side of our world. It was certainly not something to fret over in our hometowns. The mask made me pause, but I soon forgot about it. That was the beginning of a volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous journey I'm sure none of us could have imagined in late January. Early in the pandemic, I talked with a friend in Houston who reflected on Hurricane Harvey less than three years prior. 
He lamented so many businesses had already forgotten the business continuity lessons from the post-Harvey era and were reliving the ramifications through COVID-19. They had experienced the VUCA world, and yet they were unprepared three short years later when uncertainty knocked on the door again. VUCA provides a way for us to respond to our chaotic, rapidly changing world today and more confidently to the future. If we do not build for a VUCA world and respond to the new dynamics we encounter, we will fall short. Let's explore what VUCA means for new generation leaders. Proactive anticipation. One of the aspects of future thinkers I most value is their unique ability to see potential, positive or negative, long before anyone else. You need this perspective on your team and the skill in your toolbox as you prepare to lead in this new generation. The pace of change and opportunities through advancement means each year will outpace the last. We need to scan the horizons for threats and potential harm, just as we keep an eye out for opportunities and possibilities. How Leonard has been staking their corner in the music industry for generations. They have proactively anticipated an ever-changing music industry while still maintaining their viability, profitability, and results. How? Let's talk first about what they do. When the record labels find an artist, then our job is to transcribe and arrange that music, says CEO Larry Morton. Even in a digital world, Taylor Swift's youngest fans want to jam along at home. How Leonard adapted to digital music by elevating a practice of turning recorded music into principal play-at-home sheet music with tutorials and instructions on how to improve your musicianship. Inc. Magazine uses one word to describe how they handle the competition. Dominate. So how do they accomplish this domination? Attack yourself before someone else does. Ideate, iterate, question, dig in. They are working hard to get ahead, not resting on the laurels of previous accolades, but continuing to press forward proactively, anticipating the future before it arrives. Proactive anticipation allows Hal Leonard to continue to stay one step ahead, building a business model that continues adapting to the ever-changing world and builds on the success they have cultivated since 1947. What if they kept their heads down? What if they tried to keep doing the same thing over and over again, year after year? They may have run the course of Blockbuster, Toys R Us, Borders, or Circuit City, but they didn't. Generation after generation, they proactively anticipate new ways to continue their mission, getting music into the hands of the people. Challenge the status quo. How Leonard's success comes from a combination of looking ahead with an equal dose of asking tough questions. The possible opportunities and threats are out on the horizon, but they could just as quickly be right under your nose. Do you know how many organizations struggle because they continue to ignore the problems within the culture they hold so dear? A core element of the business model is outdated, yet the executives value this one aspect over health and success. A key leader, quote, cannot be moved out despite bringing toxicity into the culture. A tradition has turned into a sacred cow, which, has, which cannot be removed. What if the best parts of your organizational identity are your greatest threat? Sakichi Toyota of the Toyota companies created a philosophy to combat this, and he used it to build a high-performing international manufacturing business, including the well-regarded quality control process at Toyota Motor Company. Why is this framework so successful? Consider this theoretical example from a Toyota motor plant. What happens when a passenger door doesn't fit the car on the assembly line? If you solve the problem and get back to making cars, you fix the wrong size door and get the assembly line running again. Easy peasy, problem solved, right? But what if you ask why? Toyota asks his company why five times. Why did the passenger door not fit? The door was too large. Why was the door too large? The measurements changed on the frame based on a production process and the door design was not updated. Why was the assembly line unaware that the measurements changed? The team leader on the door team was focused on another internal crisis and missed the last design meeting. Why did the door team not have another representative at the design meeting? At this point, the possibilities are endless. 
Is it a de delegation challenge? Have next level leaders been developed? How did channels of communication work when this team leader was out of the office? We only made it through four whys. So imagine what five could do for your organization and team. The question illuminates much deeper issues than simply the door is the wrong size. One client I worked with refused to ask the five whys. The board only responded to the first why, which resulted in year after year of Band-Aid fixes. The five whys would have pointed back to an executive leadership challenge based on ineffective hiring practices, which could have been mitigated and reinforced. Instead, the process continued without identifying the root cause. After years of this challenge, the board finally moved the executive leader out, but not before considerable damage had occurred to trust within all levels of the organization and the root cause of ineffective hiring continued to cause challenges. Too often, problems are, quote, solved on the surface, but underlying issue remains, festers, and causes problems within the organization. And just because we've always done it this way, we do not have to continue. Challenge the status quo. We could have affected change if they had been willing to tackle the root cause. There's no reason to ask unnecessary questions or always debate the issues, but the questions and assumptions of challenges allow us to find room for improvement, areas for adjustment, and growth opportunities. And if we start asking good questions, good whys, we might solve a problem before it's too late. Interpret and iterate. One of my favorite things about flying is taking off and flying over our city or approaching the runway after dark. Even when it's completely dark, except for street lights and parking lot signs, when we approach our city, I pick out the landmarks and enjoy figuring out where I am. We'll keep reading more of the new generation leader when we come back right after this. Do you know most teams function at less than 60% of their true potential? How much does this cost your business every year? For every team within your business, it's at least $200,000 in lost revenue. How do you solve this challenge? With Invincible Teams, you can. Measuring the five key building blocks of high-performing teams, we immediately know where to start to take your team to its true potential. Start your free assessment today at newgenerationleader.com slash IBGR. After working with some of the largest organizations in the world and thousands of small businesses in 116 different countries, we realize that all organizations share one thing in common. They all want to unlock the potential of people. They want everyone to be productive and empowered. They want their teams to perform at the highest levels while creating an amazing culture. They want to impact the lives of their customers. At Giant, we want what you want. We discovered the science behind unlocking people, and that's why world-class brands trust us. We unlock organizations by implementing the Invincible Operating System. The Invincible Operating System begins with an assessment, so we can understand the current reality of your teams and where the growth opportunities are. Then we use our toolkit to go beyond teaching to true transformation. Our tools are memorable, practical, and profound. Lastly, we follow a process that allows us to effectively touch everyone in the organization with the right experience at the right time, so everyone from key leaders to team members can be fully unlocked. Are you ready to take your organization to the next level? Are you ready to become invincible? Most teams function at less than 60% of their potential, which costs you in lost revenue. The Invincible Teams Assessment tracks the five factors of Invincible Teams and takes your team to its true potential. Start your free assessment today at newgenerationleader.com slash IBGR.
And we're back on the new generation leader on IBGR. Today we are talking about developing clarity on quality. And we're looking at the new generation leader, chapter four on crisis round the corner. Let's pick up where we left off. I love connecting the dots from a few thousand feet. There's something about being up in the air that's so exciting to me. This is the kind of perspective we need to keep in our teams and organizations. Do you ever try to prove yourself wrong? Do you test your assumptions? In middle school, I became fascinated with the Mobius strip. Imagine putting together a paper chain as a kid would to count down to a holiday, birthday, or a trip to Disney World. Then twist one end of the loop around a one half turn. The Mobius strip becomes an infinite loop. Trace your finger across the loop and it covers every inch of the paper moving from one side to the other. It never ends. This loop symbolizes the never ending journey of continuous reflection, a vital pattern for us to embark on to improve performance and decision making. This process never concludes and we never stop learning. Volatility will drive us apart. Uncertainty will confuse. Complexity will make our teams and our heads spin. Ambiguity will set our teams on a collision course or force us to stop. Iterations will allow us to bring ingenuity and creativity to light more rapidly. Sometimes we may need to manage our expectations. Instead of lofty pie-in-the-sky goals and annual growth plans, we might need to take incremental steps. In It Doesn't Have to Be Crazy at Work, Jason Fried outlines how Basecamp tackles rapid pace change. Rather than schedule out significant growth plans, the Basecamp team tackles iterative projects. When they can deliver an incremental project successfully, then the attention moves to the next goal. Everything around us will be chaotic. Plan well and manage expectations. If your team expects VUCA, they'll be ready to conquer the challenge. So I, I want to take a minute and talk about the root cause and clarity. If we want to bring clarity to our conversation, to our reflections, if we want to bring clarity to our push for quality, sometimes we have to get down to the root cause. What's truly at the surface, not what we see on the outside, but getting down to the very core of where the challenge lies. And that's, that's what the Toyota process accomplishes, is in asking the question, why? Five times, we, we get below just that first glance. We truly begin to see and understand what's going on. We can have some clarity of what we're seeing, and what's in front of us. We can make some decisions and become more like how Leonard and less like Circuit City or Borders. We can adapt to our new reality and continue to push this expectation of quality. When we put that out to the team and understand everyone has ownership, everyone has buy-in, how are we going to adapt and adjust to the crisis as we see it? So let's talk about this clarity tool. The clarity tool has three simple questions. And as we look at our plans, as we truly move from where we as the leader are defining culture and empowering everyone on our team to define the subcultures within our organization, within our business, we need to ask these questions about our plans. Are we clear in what we're trying to accomplish? Are we clear in bringing our best to our people, to our customers, and to those we interact with? So we ask ourselves these three questions. Are our plans simple, sustainable, and scalable? Are they simple? Are they easy to understand? Are they simple enough that as we try to multiply ourselves throughout the business, that everyone else will be able to understand this within the organization? When I tell an employee to work on a task, is the expectation of that plan simple enough that they can understand it? 
not just simple enough to understand it, but simple enough to repeat. And that gets to our second question. Are our plans sustainable? Can they be maintained and upheld? Can we go through this rhythm and this repeatable process again and again? Can we continue to move forward? Are our plans sustainable? And last, are they scalable? As we add new teams, as we add new team members, as we expand and as we grow, maybe you're adding a new location, a new office. As you take your business to the next level, are these plans going to be able to scale with us, to grow with us without breaking or changing? And as we reflect on these three questions, we think about them in terms of quality and we want to raise the bar. We want to lay out the expectation. So we ask ourselves, is our expectation of quality simple? Is it sustainable? And is it scalable? When we talk to our employees about what we expect on a day-to-day basis, how they interact with customers, how they go about accomplishing their task, their role, their responsibility, Are those expectations simple? Are they clear? Can our employees grasp and get a handle on what we want them to do? Or is it too complex? The simpler we make them, the better able our teams are to repeat them, to remember them, and to stick to them. If we want those processes to take root. We've got to keep it simple. Is our expectation on quality sustainable? Are we able to sustain our mission? Are we able to sustain our expectation of quality and of raising the bar? Are we able to scale this? Is this something that's simple enough and sustainable enough that's going to stick with us, but that we can scale throughout our organization. Can I give this to our managers? Is it scalable enough that they can then pass this along to their teams, to our frontline staff, to every team member in our business, so that we can take these expectations to the next level? Are these simple enough to do this? To be honest, most organizations, it's either overly complex or we haven't even talked about our plans. If we haven't talked about our plans, how's that going to work? How can we possibly expect to increase quality if we don't even have the clarity enough to define what our expectations are. So as you think about this volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous world, the change that's coming around the next corner, we don't even know what that is at this point. Who knows what that's going to look like? Who knows what next year will hold or the year beyond it? But as we go into it with an open mind, As we get ready to tackle what's in front of us, maybe, just maybe, we're going to be ready to take on these challenges, to raise the bar, and to have simple, sustainable, scalable plans that our team will understand how to bring high quality to every aspect of what we do. And as Kevin mentioned in Keep Chopping Wood, using the example of that CEO, how as CEO, executive director, owner, how you can multiply that authority and responsibility, not to hand off, not to get rid of, not to disassociate yourself or distance yourself from the work of the business, but how you can make sure 
that these simple, sustainable, scalable plans are multiplied in the best ability of your team members. As you release them, you empower them, you call them up to the next level. When we do that, we have limitless potential. We have released our employees to ask the hard questions, to find and explore the root causes, to do what Hal Leonard has done as a business, to adapt and adjust. If they try to be a sheet music business, they might have missed the opportunity. But as they've looked at the big picture and the opportunity and the landscape in front of them, they've been able to use printed music, teaching and tutorials to adapt their business with the changes in the music industry. I don't know about you, but I remember going to the music store growing up, picking up a, a CD or a tape off the shelf, exploring, perusing the aisles of genre after genre. And we don't do that anymore. But ironically, as I, I read through a list of businesses that didn't change in the book, Circuit City was one of the places where I would peruse the music aisles. Borders was another option. And when they didn't adapt, they closed up shop. So as you think about the future, you think about the complexity and wanting to take your business to the next level, to develop clarity on quality, we got to get back to the root. Do you know most teams function at less than 60% of their true potential? How much does this cost your business every year? For every team within your business, it's at least $200,000 in lost revenue. How do you solve this challenge? With Invincible Teams, you can. Measuring the five key building blocks of high-performing teams, we immediately know where to start to take your team to its true potential. Start your free assessment today at newgenerationleader.com slash IBGR. After working with some of the largest organizations in the world and thousands of small businesses in 116 different countries, we realize that all organizations share one thing in common. They all want to unlock the potential of people. They want everyone to be productive and empowered. They want their teams to perform at the highest levels while creating an amazing culture. They want to impact the lives of their customers. At Giant, we want what you want. We've discovered the science behind unlocking people, and that's why world-class brands trust us. We unlock organizations by implementing the Invincible Operating System. The Invincible Operating System begins with an assessment, so we can understand the current reality of your teams and where the growth opportunities are. Then we use our toolkit to go beyond teaching to true transformation. Our tools are memorable, practical, and profound. Lastly, we follow a process that allows us to effectively touch everyone in the organization with the right experience at the right time, so everyone from key leaders to team members can be fully unlocked. Are you ready to take your organization to the next level? Are you ready to become invincible? Most teams function at less than 60% of their potential, which costs you in lost revenue. The Invincible Teams Assessment tracks the five factors of Invincible Teams and takes your team to its true potential. Start your free assessment today at newgenerationleader.com slash IBGR.
Welcome back to the new generation leader on IBGR. If you haven't had a chance to jump into the community, I invite you to do that. You can download the app or go to IBGR.community. One of the hallmarks that we talk about with new generation leaders is finding and building that inner circle, having the voices that you need to give you perspectives different from your own, whether that's from a different generation, a, a different voice and mindset, communication, processing perspective, or simply an outside voice. There are great people throughout the IBGR community. And as you walk through each day of our show schedule across the world, there are great voices in finance, marketing, operations, people, and entrepreneurship. So I invite you to jump into IBGR, into the community, ibgr.community or visit our website at ibgr.network to learn more about who's in this network, who's part of this community and start adding your voice. Be part of what's going on. It's an exciting time as we round out this year. Look ahead to what's next, what we've got uh, coming in 2021 and gives you a chance to Start the year off with a bang. I don't know about you, but I am ready for next year to come. And one of the things that I have been working on personally is how do I close out 2020? How do I end the year well? And as I'm thinking about developing clarity on the quality of what I do personally in my business, in consulting and people strategy with clients of all sectors, I am looking at what have I been able to accomplish this year in 2020? And what does next year look like? What should next year look like? How should next year look different? So as we round out the show today and head into this final segment, I want to walk you through what my process is going to be. And I hope the process helps you in a few ways. One, it gives you an opportunity to consider what your year-end process should look like. How are you going to round out the year? What are you going to do as we get ready to head into a new year? Hopefully a new year that has brighter potential, greater potential, uh, a year with a vaccine and a return to more of our in-person collaboration and connections and many of the things that we've been missing this year. But I hope it's also a year that allows us to keep some of the things that we've returned to. I don't know about you, but coming off the Thanksgiving holiday and heading towards Christmas and New Year's and everything that these last few weeks of 2020 hold, I'm thinking about how Thanksgiving was different. And I've had numerous conversations with people who said, you know what, it was different, but it was okay. There was an upside to this. And I know I missed what we normally have. I missed our routine, our rhythm, our traditions, but we, we did something new. We did something different. And as I think about that, those are exactly the kinds of events, habits, rhythms that we've adjusted to in 2020 that I want to make sure I include and keep a part of what I'm doing going forward. So let's take a look. I want to ask you a few questions to let you think about and consider where you are right now. What's your sense of peace on a scale of one to a hundred? How much are you at peace? And that may be a hard question to answer. So let me give you five specifics, and then we're going to put them together to get our peace index. Look at the people around you, the relationships, the connections, whether it's family, friends, the inner circle, those you work with, your neighbors, your community, all of the people and relationships that you have in your life. How much are you at peace in your relationships? Are, think about, are there challenges? 
Are there relationships that have been more distanced this year? Are there relationships that you've been able to lean in on? Give that a number, one to 100. We're going to average all these together at the end. So people first. Second, your purpose. What are you doing? Why do you do what you do? What brings you energy? What motivates you? How is that purpose giving you peace right now? How aligned are you uh, at the purpose that you have for your life? And then think about the physical place. The physical place that you uh, live, where you work, where you play. What's your community as far as a, a physical geography? Think about your home, your neighborhood, your street. On a very practical level, what's your workplace like? What's your commute like? All of these things have influence on our life and how at peace we are in general. And so as we look at each of these five ingredients, we consider the implications. Then personal health. Take a look at personal health. How healthy are you? You know, think about not only sickness and illness, but in terms of your uh, physical activity, your exercise, all of those dynamics related to your health, your diet, how at peace are you in regards to your personal health? And then last provision, think about that in terms of what you want to do with your life, how you want to live your life, but also on a very practical level. A roof over your head, food to eat, a place to lay down at night, a, a car to drive, transportation you need. Now, here's what you can do. You, you can get an overall sense of your peace if you average all these together. But you can also zero in on specific areas of your life that maybe seem out of balance right now. And as you identify that and give that some clarity, bring some clarity to that, you're better able to look at what do I need to tweak, adjust, do differently moving forward. I think the peace index is a powerful, powerful tool for us to use as we reflect on our current reality. But here's another one. It's called the 70-30 and the 70-30 is what's our current reality in terms of what brings us energy? And our goal is that we spend 70% of our time in the things that bring us energy. And 30% of our time in things that stretch us, challenge us. They may not be our go-to strengths. The 70% gives us the energy and the momentum to accomplish the tasks in the 30%. If we're out of kilter in that out of alignment, if we're maybe at 50-50, we're going to be far more exhausted at what we're doing. So reflect on that. What's your number? What's your balance? And things that give you energy and things that drain you. Give those a number and then consider, is it getting better? I may be 50-50, but I know I'm moving towards 70-30. That's great. But if you're going the other direction, if, say you're 60-40. Close to imbalance, but I can sense it's getting worse. You want to have some tangible steps that you can take to move forward with that. So I'm going to use those two tools as I'm reflecting on this year at a high level. It gives me a look a little deeper than, hey, how am I? How was the year? But then I'm going to get very tactical for instance, I'm going to look at my goals, my expectations, what I had hoped to accomplish this year. Then I'm going to look at what I did actually accomplish. To be honest, I didn't set out into 2020 saying, hey, let me write a book. But I did. And hopefully by the start of 2021, it will be in print and available, waiting for the, the printer to finish their work. I'm going to take a look at all of those dynamics and one example for me is I had set out to read one book a week. I'm going to come in a little shy of that because 
spring and summer, I, I just fell off the wagon. I, I completely lost focus and attention on that detail, that goal that I had. But to be honest, what I'm realizing is I am devouring information. And when it relates to my 70-30, I have far more going into my mind that I'm thinking about that's frankly stressing me out a little bit. There's so much information. And what I've missed is the opportunity to output, to write. I know I wrote a book. It sounds crazy, but I haven't written at a regular, consistent level this year. So in 2021, I want to change that outlook. I want to flip flip the goal, maybe limit how much I read and bring in and set a, a more manageable number so that I can do what I truly love and enjoy that brings me energy and perhaps see how much I can write next year. It's all about balance. That's the goal of the 70-30. That's the goal of the Peace Index. That's really the goal in looking at our goals is to see where can we be in better balance. And as we look at developing clarity on quality, we want to raise the bar. We want to take things to the next level. So I hope in today's show, you've had some tools, some reflections, some stories that have gotten your mind thinking on how you can develop clarity on quality in your business and in your life. And as you look to next year, build that toolkit to be a new generation leader. Thanks for listening to this week's episode on IBGR. Hope you'll join us next week as we dive in on another great episode. Have a great week, everyone. Hey, thanks so much for watching the live stream of the New Generation Leader on IBGR. As we talked about developing clarity on quality this week, I hope you are walking away with something that can help you take your leadership to the next level, that you have a new tool for your toolkit that you can put into action. I uh, hope you'll join us again next week. Jump into the conversation, hashtag New Generation Leader, and Join us next week on IBGR and across social media as we take a look at the, continuing to build our toolkit as new generation leaders, becoming the leaders the digital world needs us to be. Have a great week and thanks for watching.